I've jumped back over to Photoshop for this next video. I want to talk about the swatches panel in a little bit more detail. And so depending on what workspace you're working with in Photoshop, the color panel and the swatches panel may already be open. And so you can just click on it and you can use it and open it. If it's not open or if you've closed it out by accident, you can always go to the window menu and then find, they're all alphabetical, you can find color if you're opening the color panel and you can open the swatches panel if you need to open the swatches panel. And so for this little demo, I'd like to open both the color panel and the swatches panel. And so first, let's talk about the color panel. The color panel is actually my least favorite way to select color in any of the Adobe programs. I just think that it makes your life more difficult than it needs to be. And if we compare the color panel to a color picker, you can see the color picker, I can slide and choose the hue that I want, and then within it, I can choose a darkness or a lightness. With the color uh, panel, you get a little bit of a gradient or a, a series of colors that you can choose from. Cancel here. That you can choose from, but it's kind of limited. It doesn't show you all the colors, and eventually something like this happens because you've gotten like too deep into the matrix. Um, so then you have to slide the slider, CMYK, to create your colors, and you have to kind of know how the colors would be combined to create the color you want. And so for CMYK, that's printing colors, and it's, it's very much like the red, yellow, and blue that we'd use when painting. And so blue and yellow make green, and so in our case, cyan and yellow would make some sort of green color. And so if we set all the values to zero, I could say, well, if I add a lot of yellow and I add a lot of cyan, I can create my green color, and I can kind of click around. But if you switch the view mode, which you can do via the option flyout menu in the top right hand corner, and you choose RGB. So you can see there's there's a bunch of different options. I'll click through those in a minute. But if you choose it to RGB, RGB has to do with wavelengths of light, and it makes it more difficult to kind of say, well, how do I create, let's put them all down here. How do I create, let's say, um, green. Like you don't know how to create green using red, green, and blue. You have to say, oh, well, let's keep moving the sliders until it creates a green color. And I want the green color to be darker. So how do I get to be darker? Do I add more red? Would I add more green? I don't know how to do that. And so for me, I think it's kind of frustrating to use the color panel. But some people like it, and so we'll show it to you. You can choose different settings for your color panel. So you can see the hue cube. This is the same option you would see in the color picker. And so this is the one that I might be more apt to using because then I can say I want blue and I want a darker shade of blue or a lighter shade of blue. There's a brightness cube, there's grayscale slider, there's RGB, CMYK, you can click through these. You can even do web sliders and my favorite thing to do if I am preparing something for the web, um, there are things called web safe colors that guarantee that the colors will work on any display device. And so if you're working with color and you think to yourself, well, I want to use this color right here, it's up here now, um, how can I make sure that I can put that on the web? You can change the view mode to the option that says make ramp the web safe colors only. And it takes it and it breaks it down and it only shows you colors that you could produce safely on the web. And so instead of using the color that I chose, I might say, well, I need to use this color which is slightly different than the color I had chosen, but now that color should be safe on the web. I'm going to go ahead and close out the color panel and we're going to talk about the swatches panel. I'm also going to reset my swatches panel because I've been messing around with it for other videos and other classes. So you can see what it looks like or what it will look like when you uh, open up your panel. And so when you open up a swatches panel, it should have a series of colors available to you. And it has a lot of swatches available. There's a variety of colors. The line at the top will have the colors that you have been using in the past. And so even in this video, I've been clicking through different blue and green colors. And you can see these are colors I've used recently. The benefit of the colors on the swatches panel are that if I use this brown color and I paint something with it, let me grab my paintbrush. make a new layer and I paint something with it and then I go and I do a hundred other things and I come back and say oh, I want to paint with more of that brown color um, if I have the swatch saved I can select that same color and the next time I go to paint I am painting with the same exact shade of brown the hardest part about this is when it's in the little thumbnail icon mode that 
Sometimes you might not remember the exact shade of brown you were using, and you think it's, so if you hover over it, it'll tell you the name. So you used warm, medium warm brown, but you think, oh, maybe I was using dark warm brown, and so you grab that color, and then you paint with it and realize it's not the right swatch. And so I actually prefer to use the swatches panel. Let me undo that. I prefer to use a swatches panel in list mode, especially if I'm going to be saving my own swatches. And maybe I'm not going to have a thousand colors, maybe I'm going to have five or six. If you hit the option fly out menu, um, you can change the view mode at the top by having, let's say, a small list. And then you'll have the actual color names next to the color swatches. And so I have the same little icon, and I can find the brown one eventually down here somewhere. Um, but I also can see the name, and so if I know that I was using medium brown, and I see this one, and I think maybe that was the color, you know right away the dark red orange is not the right color. In addition to um, using the swatches that are already there, you could save your own color swatches. And so if you use the color picker to pick a really nice shade of orange, and you start using that for your project, and then you think, well, I really like that color, I'm probably going to use it over and over throughout my design or whatever you're making. Um, you can hit the option fly out menu on the swatches panel. So, so I've selected the color, it's the foreground color right now. If you hit the option fly out menu on the swatches panel, you can choose new swatch or new color swatch. And it will automatically be made from the color that's the foreground color. And you can give it a name. So I can make it logo orange if that's what I'm working on. Or I could make it sun orange if I'm using it for the sun in my project. You can give it a name, and so now when you go to use your swatch, you can see exactly where the swatch is that you would use. The last thing you can do with the swatches panel is you can choose colors from a library. So when I chose the picker and I chose this orange color, it's kind of like plugging and chugging. I just figure out the one I like and that one looks right, and I select it and I use it. But sometimes we have to be more specific with color, and especially in printing. If I want to print a very specific orange color, I can't trust that that's the right color on screen because the screen will show me RGB color mode or the color gamut available for RGB colors. But when I print, I'm using uh, CMYK for commercial printing. And so what we do is we buy printed swatch libraries. So I have swatch libraries here. If you hit the option fly out menu, you can choose a swatch library. I can choose Pantone solid coated. Oh, I did not want to save. Hang on one second. There we go. And so now I've added all the Pantone colors to this. This is a swatch library. It's the Pantone solid coated swatch library. But these are not digital colors. They are physically printed colors and you can buy a physical Pantone book and you flip through it and you find the color that you want. And so I might be looking for a color that looks like this when it's printed. But on screen, it might look like Pantone Orange 021 because when it's printed, I'm looking at the actual color and it looks right. And then I choose that color from the swatch library. And so if you're choosing a color from a swatch library for a specific reason because you want to make sure that it prints that exact color, um, you can add the swatch library by hitting the option file menu. There are other swatch libraries other than Pantone. You can see that there's a Mac OS swatch library. There's um, this HKSE process. Pantone is industry standard in graphic arts, and so you can see there's a variety of Pantone swatch books that you could buy. Um, we have, in our classes, we ask students to buy the Pantone Color Bridge, and it comes with the coded and uncoded version. And so if you're selecting color for like a graphic design class here at Salt Lake Community College, you would choose the Pantone Color Bridge library. And then all the colors that you load are the colors that you would see in your printed book. If you had, I don't know, Pantone number 806, you could find the 800s if they even exist. I just made that number up. I don't know that 800s exist. So we'll go with 477. And then you can choose that color, and now you're using that color from the swatch library. And you're guaranteed, or you're more guaranteed, that if you print that, even if you print it using CMYK, um, it will print more accurate to the color that's in the printed swatch book than the one that you see on screen. Okay, I would like you to practice creating swatches. You can create a swatch from a swatch library, or you can just change your um, fill color, or not your fill color, your foreground color, and then add that color to your swatches panel. 
When you feel comfortable with using the color panel and the swatches panel, you can move forward and we will continue with the next video in this lecture.